Kirby has he's relinquished the reins to Kirby. So I don't know. And I think he said he wants to like he wants this one to be the last one. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how you get the same roster in the next in whatever Smash Six would be, could be. I don't think you can get the same roster. Because that's right. this is Well, this is a conversation I do love having and I will continue it later, but for the meantime, we need to get into this next match right here. This is gonna be Dark Falcon versus Teapot. Uh both of these players are of course we've seen them time and time again here on the uh on stream and they've uh they've they've had some amazing results with their uh Xeno Wi Fi tenure. And considering this is the last possible tournament that they can, you know, at the very least be competing online in this way, uh, we'll see how they actually end up doing. Oh, but I think at the very the fast fall, is that what happened? That felt like a self-inflicted SD. Yeah, I can understand trying to set up the high-low mix-up in a spot like that. You Like, you go for down air to, to try and get to ledge quicker, but just kind of messing up. And that gives Teapot a huge, huge advantage. Uh, because Terry is just so good in uh, when he when he's allowed to just like press buttons and be plus on shield, but let shopping be damned. Like Dark Falcon closes out that stuff very quickly. Right. That is definitely we're seeing that let shopping is just so so important. But, and that's why Teapot, oh, no, like we, 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 we like to see how he pushes his opponent to the corner, but if he's not careful, he can get that reversed on him. Oh, never mind. Being in the corner is where he lo like loves to be. That down air, just the angle it sends at, just so brutal. Oh, Dark Falcon now completely on the back foot here. Gets a little bit of an opening, but as it stands, okay, perhaps completing this edge guard. Another one of those, uh, another one of those holy waters to forward air, but not actually able to keep him on the corner that long. We have Teapot once more on stage, once again in control, managing to catch that missed tech. Okay, I think he was looking for something big with that up B, but I mean, he's still continuing this pressure and oh, he's continuing it all the way off stage. That is gonna be a real quick game one for Teapot. I mean, uh, we saw this in game in the previous set, SD stock one, it happens. But Teapot looked so uh, so firmly in control with some of this pressure. I mean, I don't believe. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he he does jump into it here. But even in the interaction before that, like the uh, the whip to the ledge from that Dark Falcon did. Uh, he uh, Teapot was there to try and cover the tether back with a act, very active forward air that uh, basically all of the uh, FGC reps have. Like this forward air that lingers for a good long while. But you do have to be absolutely ready for the for the mix-up that uh, Teapot goes for, which is just a burn knuckle straight out from flat on the stage, and that's a it covers an entire space that normally players feel pretty comfortable in because you have so many mix-ups there. But going right back to Town City, I don't I don't dislike this pick at all. You're just you're trying to make make use of the space now, and that starts right here getting the lead which he seems to be doing a pretty good job of oh yeah oh i mean this is that's something we didn't really see last time is what happens when dark falcon actually has a lead the way he can play to that you know the belmonts in general it's one of their strongest strongest attributes is once they have a lead the way that they're able to continuously put on pressure force the opponent to approach and just attack on even more and more percent and even be able to get some stocks from there as well oh but we're at go time and another one of as we were talking about those side b's but that time around dark falcon avoids it but he has to be real scared i think he's actually He's not quite dead yet, but with no air dodge, he's off stage, makes it back, but he missed oh. the true input. He missed the true input on his burn knuckle, and that's what, that was a punish out of shield, but Dark Falcon lets it go. And this this game, which started it's so strong, is now well, I mean he closes out the stock there, but going from basically zero to one thirty, you're feeling pretty good. And yeah, just canes up that stock immediately. Almost no extra credit for Dark Falcon. 
Uh, he might be able to repeat that earlier success, you know. We're seeing the way that he uses the range. He's throwing out all of these projectiles. I I've talked to Belmont players before, and, you know, a lot of the times, the way you can really see a Belmont, the sort of the, the gameplay strategy come out, is with the second projectile, the one he throws out after the first. How he's trying to actually limit the options. And right now, it feels like, honestly, he's not even getting the chance to really throw out a second projectile. There's always in range to... Uh, Threatening. That's what's happening right now. Look at this. Okay, ah, getting that actually turned around on him. Terry Bogart now. He's not quite at go percent, but he has a decent amount of rage. And now it is, in fact, go time. If he's not careful, he can get just absolutely blown up even now. Oh. The, the auto turnaround saves him with the power geyser. I mean, he was looking for the up tilt geyser confirmed, but... Like, it's still rather tight. Love that. It, love that air to air. Like, it feels like that's a stock. It definitely feels like that's a stock. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and now we're at that point where Dark Falcon needs to be taking this stock immediately without. Oh, he saved, saved his jump really smart. They're able to mix up the timing in a profound way. And now he is still alive, still alive, even after getting burned by that holy water. Meaning that not only does he have this extra stock with some extra breathing room, it's gone now. So he doesn't have, now Dark Falcon doesn't have to worry about getting blown up by those super powerful go moves. But as it stands, already Dark Falcon taking about 42%. He's managing to wall him out pretty effectively, but he's not getting that much. A single forward tilt here, a forward air there. And then as soon as Teapot gets in, it's always consistent big damage as we're seeing 76 he's put off stage a nice reversal right there but it gets reversed right back at him it feels like even when dark falcon gets a hit in he's not able to do that much off of it whether that's out of fear or just out of careful play from teapot it doesn't really matter teapot is in the driver's seat he's looking for a kill move possibly at this point oh actually slowing things down no he's not he's speeding them right back up again Oh, but going off stage like that, uh, buddy, you have a pretty big lead. But he's not trying to let, uh, let Dark Falcon rest. Once you let the Belmont player like sit back and start throwing out these, uh, these wall and amassing his resources, then you start feeling very, very scared. But that's the, sh oh my. <laughs> He was so close. There's so much just inches, literal inches from a game ending. And now Dark Falcon is in full control with this ledge trap. The, the holy water comes down multiple times. So much spaghetti. So much spaghetti could happen throughout the entirety of those final interactions with the, the mishandled roll reads on the dash back from a teapot's part. And then that same roll in read that Dark Falcon had. He had it, but just mistimes it. And the down tilt buster roll of true combo. Well, GG's. It, yeah, I think he was probably anticipating a tech roll in as opposed to he, he missed his tech. Yeah, and I, it's right. the sort of thing where if you... Uh, uh, that maybe perhaps the online environment where you have to sort of more anticipate. You know, there's less that you can truly react to. But... Uh, nonetheless, I mean, both players managing to, you know, just stay alive, waiting through the spaghetti, and that's going to be another game for Teapot, as he now only needs to take one more to guarantee himself a spot in Winner's Finals, where he's going to be facing off against Jonathan. If that does so happen, which it still might not, Dark Falcon, you know, he's got a lot of work to do, but we've definitely seen that this guy has put up some fantastic results over his career his, uh, his time here at Xeno Wi-Fi. And considering this is his last chance to really show what, what he's got, at least in the online environment, he's not going to go down without a fight. No, absolutely not. But it's going to be hard to compensate for the type of play that Teapot has been going with. I mean, I like the initial uh, transition that Dark Falcon has done. He, you mentioned that second projectile before. Uh, Dark Falcon's second projectile has so steadily become just his whip, whether it be forward air, back air, uh, etc. As you go to the uh, Lilat, a often uh, comfort counter pick for uh, Dark Falcon in many uh, many a time, but you're gonna you're gonna have to really fully utilize it against uh, Teapot, who had been going so reliably with these falling aerials and even these rising nares that could, he can just immediately cancel into uh, one of his many specials. Like, 
I guess that's why you go here for the platforms, but it's it's certainly a tall task to go with someone that's just so constantly in your face. Oh, but this time around, it seems like the face is, <laughs> his face is pretty well protected. Even he's even managing to outspace those uh those burst options that you know Terry gets once he gets to go time. And at this point, just he's been trapped at the ledge, which feels like an eternity. Oh, and that's a big part of it, the fact that the axe can hit below the stage in a really meaningful way. All right, I do actually really agree with this counter pick because as we're seeing, it's we, we, we're seeing Teapot trapped in a way that he wasn't in those previous two. Dark Falcon has a huge lead right now. Oh, but if he's not careful, sometimes Lilat is uh, giveth and Lilat taketh away. If he winds up off stage, uh, definitely there are things that Terry can do to end his life pretty early. Okay. Oh my god, so many hits coming out. That's actually some really nice damage. 60% already onto Teapot. It looked like he was making a really reliable comeback here, but we're, this is actually the sort of thing where he gets hit once, and now he's being stuck in disadvantage for a really long time. 80% already dished out onto him. So, even if... Uh, even if Teapot does finally manage to take the stock, which I don't even know if he's going to be able to do, um, he, he's going to be spawning in at 100, you know, his opponent's going to be spawning in, facing him down at 116%. Oh, man, he's trapped at the corner. Teapot trying to chase him down, but gets caught. This looks so tricky, especially with these axes. They are flying at such a perfect spot, and since they go through stage, this low recovery that Terry almost has to do with his rising tackle, like the perfect angle is covered. Like it, man, it really looks like going back to town and city was just kind of really, really bad. So like, yeah, the forward throw is gonna do it. Like, just everything looking so strong for Dark Falcon on this stage. Like, it's, it may not be Smashville, but it certainly is functioning like it because he can hide underneath these platforms and force Teapot to interact with these, the cross and the holy water. Okay, finally cleaning up that stop. Ugh, stock. Uh, Teapot, though, at 55%, and he has to be approaching the Belmont. That's, not, that's something you cannot forget. The fact that you know these that 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 now he has to close in the gap, and you see the way he's trying to do it. Definitely, Dark Falcon is anticipating, and he's just getting hit for every approach he tries to go for. It seems like forward throw at this percent is actually enough to do it. Game two, uh, game three, rather, going to go to Dark Falcon, but I do think that that stage had a big part to play in it. So let's see how the stage counter pick ends up affect affecting game four as we now move into it. Yeah, it, it really goes to show just how good a Belmont player can be once he's allowed to control space. And there was certainly, like, basically, the middle section of Lilat, Teapot did not touch for 30 seconds, a minute. Minutes, but like two minutes at a time, he would just be stuck on ledge or in the air, forced to land on platforms or retreat to the slants that are just covered constantly with the bottle uh, falling at a particular angle and the axe always coming in from above. Like, I, I would not be surprised to see us go back to a stage like Town and City, where you get to see t uh, Terry use that, uh, use his burst range a little bit. The plus frames on yeah. um, the- uh, Something else the power, also- the power Something else also uh, worth noting, Teapot really likes to use the auto-canceled version of the power dunk to the corner, but Lilat setup uh, did not let him do that because of the side platforms. Like you see right there, he opens with it immediately, and the fact that FD was not banned, I think is gonna be a big thing. Immediately, this is an approach option he didn't have, and just like that, the difference in not having those side platforms is just immediately apparent, immediately. He can start approaching from this devastating <laughs> diagonal angle and these oh. spike, two spikes oh. now. Like, You're touched. He's untouched, dude. It doesn't stop coming. All right, we're getting rid of the JB4, but like, what kind of consolation prize is that when you surrender <laughs> two stocks for it? In the first 30 seconds. These, these true input power dunks are making their money. <laughs> it's uh -oh. not are we gonna have a game plus on a minute. Uh, we could. <laughs> This is, this is so, so, like, what a start. What an absolute ridiculous start. And Dark Falcon has a long way to go. 
I mean, Belmont play, Belmont is a slow, slow character. Very bad air acceleration, very bad air speed. So trying to get a comeback with this character, trying to find momentum with this character, is you really do have to earn it. And Teapot looks like he's having none of it with all of these, uh, with all these true input specials consuming the screen. <laughs> okay, another one of those down tilts. I like the fact of just throwing out these get off me options. Recognizing that Teapot probably just wants to end this game, considering all the work he put in in the first 25 seconds of it. Uh, okay, and so he's just going in his face, chasing him down. That might be it. Oh, he shields the attack. And another one of those power dunks, I love the fact he's able to punish them using the ex the, the huge range that uh, Belmont does have with his forward air and back air. Okay, he might actually be able to take this stock. Let's see if this goes. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I don't believe that, I, I don't know how to feel about a genuine real life comeback happening here. But this stock can definitely disappear from Teapot. And at that point, you know, 152, yeah, he might be at but there's a lot, a lot of, you know, you're saying how we, oh, it can be difficult for the Belmonts to make a, you know, a genuine comeback, but he also has some ridiculous kill power that he will not have access to because that's going to be the set going over to Teapot. It's, you're in such a rough spot in, in a situation like that because, like, you're, you want to, you want to jump and throw out one of these whips. You want to throw out a forward or a back air, something that'll kill at this percent and just ha with how quick... Uh, the power dunk starts up. The intangibility on it, you saw him flashing. The brief intangibility on it while he turns his cap around could mean you you're end up flying through uh, a cross or a holy water that is just a little bit too late. So you have to roll. Oh, it was it so it was he was literally at died at zero. He literally died at zero. Yeah. Power dunk did 21 on A and B. Yeah, he did. And then, what, was it, what was it? He died at forty here. Yeah, because he did the cool. same. He did the same thing. No, he got that down he there. In, uh, he got down there, but he did the same thing he did in game one, where it was just standing at a ledge, then full hop slightly back, and throw out down air. Like it's just it catches jump, and it sends at such a devious angle that forces you to di in and pray. What a what a wild way to end a set. And given how in previous, <laughs> last week, Teapot 